Hello, neuroscientists. We have now made the cortex of our big brain and the interior of our big brain. If you haven't done those things, watch the other videos, the links are down below. And now we get to do my favorite part, which is to map the functions of the brain. So I made a handout that has a bunch of different functions of the brain, 36 to be precise, and then I cut each of those out. If you would like to use the clip art and those descriptions, you are welcome to print this document. It's in the description of the video, and then you can cut them out. So my students, you are required to identify 10 functions from the cortex, and you must include at least one function from each of the four lobes. You have to include a function of the motor cortex, the sensory cortex, Broca's area, auditory cortex, and Wernicke's area. That's actually nine areas. So then you can throw in one more of your own choosing. Don't feel like you have to limit yourself to 10. You could certainly do more than 10. You can use the little pictures, or you can just write the function in. If you don't have a way to get the pictures, or um, you just prefer to write the functions in. So I'm gonna do one example for you. I know that Broca's area is the area that allows us to speak, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue down my picture showing that right here. Now there's just nine more for you to do. And if you look at all these different things, there are actually 16 that can go on the outside of the brain and 16 that can go on the inside. So I've given you more than enough. But maybe you're curious about a function that I didn't include. And that's totally fine. Um, you can find other things that you're interested in and you can include those as well or instead of some of the things I included. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. When we get to the interior, things get a lot more crazy because everything that we are working with is much closer together. So you have to include at least one function of each of the, of each of the limbic system structures, the hippocampus, pineal gland, hypothalamus, olfactory bulb, and amygdala. You might find other limbic system structures that you want to include and you can just add those. You have to have at least one function of the cerebellum. I included three. One for the midbrain, at least, one for the pons, I included several, and one for medulla oblongata. So if you add those up, that's actually five, six, seven, eight, nine things. And like I said, you have to have 10 minimum if you're one of my students. And then there will be six more that you can include if you'd like, if you go off of my handout. Because this interior of the brain is so crowded, you might find that it's helpful to add a little line to show where things go. So for instance, alertness, I've put it right here. It's actually a function of the midbrain. So I'm just gonna make an arrow pointing from the midbrain to that picture, since it's hard to tell if it's with the cerebellum, the pons, the midbrain, medulla oblongata. When you get to something like the pineal gland, it's hard to fit them in. So you can stick it here and then just draw an arrow pointing to the pineal gland. And when you make your video, you'll explain, for instance, alertness is controlled by the midbrain, which is part of the brainstem. Okay guys, so that is how to map a brain. I hope you have as much fun mapping your brain as I had mapping mine.